the Behind the Connection podcast, the podcast that covers all things internet and technology related. The good, the bad, the complexities, and the realities. We talk about it all right here on Behind the Connection. I'm Tyler Rasmussen, and I'm your host. I'm joined today with by a couple handsome individuals. I guess I can call you two handsome, huh? I, I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> yeah, yeah, old you're, and handsome. There's at least two ladies in the Uinta Basin <laughs> that would concur, right? Your wives would concur that you're handsome. Yeah, maybe some of the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we would all. <laughs> no, I've got a couple of great guys here with me today, and I want to take just a minute and let them introduce themselves. Obviously, a couple of Strata employees, key employees in our organization. So, Todd, why don't you start? Give us a brief introduction of yeah, yourself. Yeah, Todd, age before beauty. Age before beauty. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I had the uh, mm. the opportunity. I'm a, a lifetime uh, employee of Telcom, I guess you could say. 42 years of service. Uh, the last 20, I've had the opportunity to be here at Strata. And uh, it's, it's been a great opportunity. Uh, we've got to see a lot of changes uh, through my lifetime in technology. And uh, we're really seeing a lot right now, uh, just as we are seeing some changes in TV. Mm. Uh, I had the opportunity... Uh, to manage some of those groups, uh, our installer groups, our fiber groups, and some of those other individuals that are out in people's homes and those type of things, as well as some of the construction side of things. And so uh, get to see the, uh, the, the A to Z look yeah. of the, the telecom industry that's now uh, become a really a broadband uh, oriented, company, service, oriented service, right? Service, yeah. So what's your official title? Uh, plant operations manager. Okay. And specifically the teams that you have reporting to you today are? Let's kind of I, break that down for I the consumers. FDA, which is our fiber uh, distribution areas, and we do the installers. Uh, we, we install a lot of the cable, aerial cable. Mm-hmm. We have cable repair, uh, which maintains the old co- or the old uh, copper plant that we still have mm-hmm. and uh, have the coax uh, cable uh, plant. Uh, we do everything in, in the cable side, uh, even the install side of that, mm-hmm. as well as uh, some of the other individuals that... Uh, blow fiber and, and do those type of things. So our new technology type people. So Great. So by, by way of kind of starting to introduce our topic for today too, I mean, you've historically been um, overseeing the crews that have been managing our, our coaxial cable te- television service, correct? And Yes. I'm, since and, about 2009, when we purchased that, uh, yeah. it was kind of a new play for us. And so yeah, it's been a stretch. Yeah, yeah. So, so we've we've enjoyed it, and we've obviously we'll be talking about this more today. But we've made some transitions with that television service as it relates to Strata's TV offering, and so that's what we're going to be talking about today. And that's why you're one of our guests. So. Yes, thank you. We have indeed. We've we've come a long ways. And you're a. I mean, I guess I can say you're a, you're a Ute, right? You're a UN a Ute. I I you're, am. You reside I, here in Vernal, and I am indeed. Uh, <laughs> yep, I uh, I have to say that. There's a lot of friendly banter that goes on at Strata because we have employees from all across the basin, you know, Tabiona to Uinta and everything in between. So well, banter's putting it lightly. I'm, <laughs> I married a Uinta U. Yeah. So, so in Union and Uinta face off, it, it gets pretty exciting. Yeah. It gets pretty exciting. But we did see Bo over at a few of the games uh, this year, and so it was good to see that that Cougar face. <laughs> well, yeah, I had my Union Cougar T-shirt he on. Did, I, I had to leave at halftime after <laughs> Union was beating you guys. So oh, that, that was I, a pretty I, uh, pretty I, good. I was shellacking. starting to get some looks. That, that got a little. Ugly. But, uh, yeah, next year. We always say next year, Bo. <laughs> That's a great segue. Bo, you better introduce yourself after oh, that one. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, n- not nearly as colorful or exciting as Todd's <laughs> time. But so, yeah, I, I grew up here in the Uinta Basin. Um, graduated from Union High School, uh, what, 1998. Um, married a gal here from uh, Vernal, uh, Autumn Reynolds. Many of you guys probably know her. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> My first tour at Strata was in 2001. Uh, I stayed with Strata from, you know, till 2007. Decided I, I got kind of a wild hair and, and went off to law school. Uh, did that for a few years and came back to, to Utah, passed the bar here, kind of played around in the, in the private sector. And then in uh, 2014, an opportunity came back to, uh, came to me to uh, come back to Strata and uh, been to Strata ever since. And it's, uh, it's been a great, great ride. Um, it has. And even though he's an attorney, we still trust him. Yeah. Most, yeah. most of the time. Well, I'm, of the time. I'm, I'm a reforming attorney. <laughs> we uh, trust, but uh, we verify, right? <laughs> we do. I don't, I don't know why anybody <laughs> likes to hang out with attorneys, but sometimes you have to. Oh, no, yeah. Bo's been a great addition to our he team. Has. He's been fantastic. Obviously, you know, there's, you know, Strata works with legal counsel on a variety of issues for, for many, many years, but it's been really good to have Bo in-house yeah. and provide that legal expertise. So what has been your involvement with TV, you know, 
Oh, some... yeah, TV specifically. Uh, none of the exciting stuff, like like Todd and his crew. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I'm involved heavily with the, uh, you know, cont- content negotiations. You know, I don't know if consumers or customers know this, but, you know, Strata has to buy the rights to all the content that we that we distribute to to residents and customers of the Unibasin. And so my role, for better or for worse, is I, I have to review the contracts to make sure that we're in compliance with carriage obligations, um, you know, even, even uh, you know, advertisement obligations and thing, you know, things of that nature, uh, make sure that we're not running afoul mm-hmm. of, of our, our responsibilities there. And then to also, uh, you know, battle and fight to, to keep those costs down, which I think is, is definitely a hot topic with customers and consumers. Oh, yeah. yeah, and we'll get into that maybe a little bit yeah. more, as much as confidentially, confidentiality will allow us to, right? I mean, all these agreements have confidentiality requirements. and Yeah, they don't, they don't, they don't like to know, they don't, they don't like customers knowing how, uh, you know, how rough they are on, yeah. on the cable TV providers. Yeah, they, they definitely are. Um, all right, so we'll get into that a little bit too. So let's maybe dive into, gentlemen, let's dive into a brief history of Strata's experience with TV. I mean, how did it all start? I mean, you know, in 2001, Strata purchased the Quest exchanges of Roosevelt, Vernal, and Duchesne, and so many of those exchanges probably didn't really know Strata's affiliation with TV other than with DirecTV, right? This right, yeah, we did DBS offering. How did that come about? Todd, maybe you can give us a brief synopsis of that. As far as the uh, direct TV side of that, uh, I don't know a lot that was before my time, uh, but yet uh, we had the opportunity, I believe, to be engaged or wanted to offer. uh, In those days, uh, Telcom was talking a lot of triple play. Mm -hmm. And so being uh, able to provide TV as well as uh, your telecom uh, in broadband service, and and obviously at that time, voice was huge still. Mm -hmm. And so uh, direct was an option that, that gave us the ability to do that. Mm-hmm. And so further yeah. down that path, we uh, direct wanted that content back, I mm-hmm. guess you could say. That yeah, my understanding of the history, because it was prior to my time too, but my understanding of the history, late 80s, early 90s, I might be a little off in that yeah. time frame, but but there wasn't a television service offering in the UNA Basin outside of the traditional cable systems right. that existed in Vernal and Roosevelt. And th- those were pretty small probably at the time. And so there was there was some requests uh, by the cooperative members of Strata to to offer a satellite based television service, which you know, Bo and I remember this. Todd, you probably remember it well. I, I remember as a kid running outside and cranking on the big satellite big for satellite. my dad, right, yep. to move yep. it. And he'd yell out the window, a little more, you know. <laughs> yep, that was that was the service that was available when I was a kid, you know, either that or off air. And so so you and a basin telephone at the time chose to buy into a franchise with DirecTV and become the DirecTV re- reseller here in the Unibase. And it actually was a very good business for Oh, for, for UB, UBTA strata for quite a while. It was. And some of those of us that were in the telecom business, when somebody would say every house will have a satellite on it, mm-hmm. I would just think there's no way. It's right. just not going to happen. But It went that way for a while, right? Yeah, and, and it's still a very good service for many but parts of the UNA Basin. Um, and, and as Todd mentioned or alluded to, there came a time several years ago where DirecTV wanted to buy that franchise back, and, and they right. did buy that franchise back from, from strata. And, and once again, that it turned into a, a good investment for Strata and, and those the capital that was raised from that was redeployed and it was a very, very good decision. So, Agreed. you know, our CEO, manager and board, when they made that decision many, many years ago, it turned out to be a very, very good thing. But it obviously transitioned and we went away from TV for a while. So how did we get back into TV? This is maybe where, where obviously your direct experience ties into this. So, so yeah, we had the opportunity. Uh, Bresden was... Uh, a voice that they were selling some of their properties and it was an opportunity for us to maybe make an offer. Uh, we didn't really think they would take that offer, but uh, they they wanted a trial run. And so we were there, I guess you could say guinea pig, to, mm-hmm. to see how sales would go. And uh, so it gave us the opportunity to get engaged in, in the TV business again and, and again, offer uh, uh, that triple play. Uh, like I say, that was the biggest thing at that time. And it also was a, as a timing is about when we purchased uh, V6 as mm-hmm. well because we wanted to, you know, capture some of that video that was local content so mm-hmm. people would want to come to, to see our Strata offering. TV. Right, know? yeah. And when, when was that, Todd, just refresh? Was that around 2009, 2010? I, I think it was right there, the, the negotiations in the 2009, 2010 area. So yeah, and just prior to that too, just prior to that too, um, 
Strata had purchased the Precis properties in Correct. in Roosevelt and Duchesne, which were once again very small cable systems yes. in both of those exchanges. The Bresnan property that Todd is referring to is primarily in Vernal, Mazer, Naples, um, much bigger property, but Correct. but that kind of made us stick our toe in and much more than our toe actually oh, yeah. stick our leg into the cable yeah. television business and, and as Todd has mentioned, get familiar with it. And that's that's basically been the last ten years, right? Yeah. We've um, so what what are some of the limitations of that? Where 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 did we arrive six months ago? You know, with that service. So I guess some of the limitations when you look at uh, that were our area. We were definitely uh, you know wherever coax uh, plant was at. That's where we could offer that that service. And so <clears throat> so and and I'm sure most people understand. But when we're saying coax plant, kind of break that. I mean, it's just coaxial cable, right? It that's, is. Uh, that's yeah. all it is. It and is so coaxial cable. it's probably confusing to a lot of people when we reference copper, coax, and fiber. But really, Strata uses a variety of different technology mediums to deliver a variety of different services. And so, so whether it's copper, you know, which is just a twisted pair copper line right. buried in the ground or hung on a pole, right? We can deliver DSL services and voice services over that. Um, and coax is similar, right? You can deliver yep. internet services or television services over coax. And fiber is obviously probably the most robust because you can deliver really, I mean, any service yeah, on because of the capacity. So, so far is endless with, with yeah. fiber. So. so sorry, I interrupted you there. You were talking about the coax plant component. And so that coax plant it, uh, at that time was, uh, it was what we called an RF plant, which was just a radio frequency type plant. Uh, it was uh, a time for an upgrade. Uh, I think that was a good time for them to sell and a good time for us to purchase. Uh, we learned a lot with that. We switched our TV side of things to, to a digital service and that improved the quality of service. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if any of those out there remember that, but, uh, we went from a little bit of a foggy TV to a really clear TV picture and, and mm -hmm. it, it was great. And that also allowed us to, s to sell a few other channels, mm -hmm. uh, not as many as we had hoped, but, uh, but more. So I think it really opened the doors for, mm -hmm. for the customer. And we were still, but we were still limited with that um, cable television service to only those three exchanges, right? Roosevelt, right. Vernal, and Duchesne. So that was partially one of the limitations that we felt over that 10 year period is how can we, how can we deploy a service that's available across the UNA Basin as a whole, right? Yeah. Yep. So yeah, for a number of years, maybe we can kind of lean on, lean on Bo for this one. Um, how did, how has Strata been evaluating, you know, changing or removing those restrictions and limitations and talk maybe a little bit about what this new service is that we're offering? Well, yeah, I mean, the, the new service, I think you and Todd have had a chance to play around with the new service more than I have and, and I've seen it and it is a, a great service, a great quality picture. Um, I, I think the limitations are what Todd alluded to and then what you've referenced is that on that old coax system that we purchased from, from Bresnan and Precis, it just didn't reach all the customers, not even within the, the cities that they were located in. Uh, and so we, we realized we needed to make a change there. And as Strata has been able to deploy more fiber throughout the area, I'm, I'm sure everybody's familiar with Strata's push to, to get fiber everywhere. That, that, that enabled us to switch technologies to, to get off of the, you know, the coax plant or actually to merge the coax plant with the fiber plant. And now we can deliver the, 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 television service to every every resident here in the Uinta Basin that has the ability to get, you know, at least 25 megabits per second, you know, speed on, on their internet. And and it's uh, opened up some some new new areas and then we've it's been received very well. Mm -hmm. um, it's very similar to many people probably familiar with the, you know, YouTubes and Hulu's out there. Mm -hmm. uh, it's actually the same technology that they use. And uh, it, it's worked well for us. So, so basically, we're Strata's able to deliver that service anywhere in the UNA Basin where internet exists because it's just an IP-based and internet protocol-based service, yeah. right? So it's yeah. an it's a streaming yeah. service, a lot like like you just said, Netflix or yeah. you know your Amazon yeah. television service or YouTube TV, anything that you're watching over the internet. It's basically delivered in a similar type protocol. Yeah. So anywhere where you have um, an acceptable broadband connection or internet connection, we can deliver that service. So it's opened up, you know, this television service that Strata has been delivering for many years. It's opened it up to people in Tabiona and Neola and Aldemont and Duchesne, wherever, right? Well, yeah. yeah. And, and the other good thing about it too, is you don't have to hang a dish mm -hmm. on your house. Um, you know, your, your bill comes as one from Strata. You don't, you don't have to 
fight with DirecTV or whoever it is that you're using uh, and then the incremental cost increases that, that you always experience with them. They always seem to have good introductory offers, but then you turn it around six months later and you're, you're dealing with a, you know, a huge spike. And that's a good point. Bill. I still have a direct TV dish on my house that it hasn't been used for yeah, probably so eight, eight yeah. or nine years. So At some you, point I need to remove that, that thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, along with that, Tyler, we, we see a lot of, uh, a change in that technology. We, a number of years ago, we tried to roll out IPTV, but the, it was a bandwidth hog. Mm-hmm. And so it wasn't available to all of our customers mm-hmm. as this is today. Uh, you know, your speeds needed to be up in that, almost that 50 meg range in order to, to, to do it. And mm-hmm. with this, uh, the compression rates have made it to where, uh, we can get traditional TV in every home almost in the mm-hmm. basin now. And, and it does have a traditional feel and look. Mm-hmm. We have, we have technologies where, you know, you use maybe uh, your smart TV or, or other technology to, to get you there. But uh, there's also the, the method of going back to a, a small set top box that uh, has a normal channel change. And it looks very much like a, a traditional TV for those of us that, uh, yeah. that like flipping through the channels. Yeah. And to be more specific with what Todd's saying there, cause you're absolutely right. I mean, to the younger demographic, you know, that that's listening to this podcast, you know, they're going to understand some of these things yeah. we're going to say better than maybe, you know, like even my folks that are a little yeah. bit older, but so you can receive the service on like a, a Apple TV, right? It's right. just an app that gets installed on your Apple TV and then you pay for the service and it authenticates and you have the full channel lineup. You can use an Amazon fire stick, right? Yep. Or a smart TV as, as Todd has mentioned that accepts app downloads. Or if you're like my folks, you know, um, like like Todd said, we can actually place a set top box in your house, and when you power that set top box, it comes on and looks just like your traditional television guide that you're used to seeing. So there's there's some flexibilities and options there. And so for consumers that are more comfortable with like a Roku or an Apple TV or an Amazon Fire Stick, you can avoid you know having that equipment or you know the cost that the hardware the you know I'm one that I I, I can't stand having all these different devices stacked on my I agree. you know my television television console so it's really nice to have an apple tv and just have it basically be my my streaming device for all of my different services oh yeah, yeah it's, it's much cleaner today than it is in the past yeah i i have a uh, you know and a couple of tvs i have the fire stick and and it's great because if you can shuffle through your other apps that you use uh it's easy and then a, a tv where we we watch it most of the time and like to fit, flip through the channels mm-hmm. we have that traditional set top box and it's you know it's yeah. great for for those of us that uh, like that. Yeah. yeah. And and I think this, I think you're going to get to this here shortly, but just kind of more specifics on our offering is that you know, we have, we don't have the, we have the very, tr- we're very transparent as far as, you know, no contracts mm-hmm. are required. You know, you can come in, sign up for the service. I believe we're off in a 30 day free yep. trial with it. Yeah. We right definitely now. wanted to make folks aware of that. They can try it for free for 30 days. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's, and it's quick and easy. You, you can pick your, your plan that you want or your, your channels, I guess mm-hmm. that your tier of channels. And then, uh, you don't have a surprise bill. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's, it's very, very plainly stated that this is what you're getting. You know, there's no contracts to mess around with. If you don't like it, you know, you can disconnect and, you know, go on your way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think it's probably important to know, those are some really key things you just hit on there, Bo. Really important to note too, that this service obviously has network based DVR. It has, mm-hmm. you know, um, Trick play has remote watching on on a lot of content, and we'll come back to that one as well. Yeah. Remote watching meaning, you know, if you record a piece, you know, an asset, a video asset, you can watch it from somewhere else. Um, yeah. We are restricted by some <laughs> programmers, right? Yeah, yeah they won't awesome. allow us to let people watch stuff remotely, so we have to lock some of that down, which is yeah, frustrating. It seems like the more popular the content, the more restrictions you're gonna you're gonna find. Yeah. Um, you know, live live sports broadcast things like that are still fairly well restricted. Yeah. What you can, can't do. And probably one of the biggest differentiators, which we hit on earlier, is the, you know, the Channel V6 content, right? It's, right. We, it, you know, yeah. we've got the Channel V6 on there and it's not available on any other television service that consumers have here in the Uinta Basin. And, and that's a lot of fun to watch. I mean, you can, you can, you know, watch a, a you know, your high school sports, mm-hmm. uh, you know, things like that in the area. And I think during this COVID era, that's been utilized a great deal. Absolutely. I mean, you know, Games now are restricted to what two to four yep. parents that are associated yep. with the player, uh, and and so a lot of grandparents and things like that have uh, that's been a benefit for them. Yeah, yeah. V, the V six team has been phenomenal too. They've 
worked proactively with the school districts and all the different high schools in the basin, and they've got they're they're building up some really really cool career paths for some of these kids because they now have student production teams right. in every school, and so a lot of the content you're seeing is coming from a couple of high school students. They're setting up the camera and sending the feed to V6 and to their streaming services and platform. Well, I, and so I, I guarantee you some of these high school kids could do a lot better job on the podcast <laughs> than what we're doing. <laughs> they, they I'm, could. I'm yeah, sure you're right. They're yeah. just more comfortable with it. Yeah, I'm sure you know, you're it, right. It's become uh, popular enough that, uh, you know, I have a, a grandson playing basketball on the eighth grade team and, and now you're seeing parents, uh, video and, you know, those games so that mm-hmm. they could be shared just like the high school games. Mm-hmm. And so it's, a uh, I, people, this is a time frame, like you said, with the COVID-19 issue, people, uh, you know, want this type of content. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. It's definitely a, a huge need for our, for the public right now. Uh, otherwise, you know, grandparents and friends and family, they just don't get to participate in any of it if they can't watch it on the streaming service. So it's great to have that as part of the Strata TV offering. So um, maybe kind of lastly, Bo, talk to us a little bit about some of the consumer frustrations that happen with TV. I mean, we want our consumers to know that we're sensitive to those things. And even though we're a service provider, we also are customers just like they are. And there's mm-hmm. there's things that are frustrating for us about the service too. So maybe talk briefly about in those things. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're we're definitely aware of, of customer frustrations. Uh, it, their frustrations are the same as our frustrations. Uh, namely, it's the, the cost associated with with the television service. It, every year, it just seems to increase. And the reason for that is it's the content providers that continue to, year after year, increase the costs of, of acquiring their channels. Mm-hmm. And and that's it's important for customers, I, I think, to, I, I guess, see a little bit behind the curtain. Mm-hmm. Along with that, Bo, uh, they obviously make us take more than just that one channel too. Yeah, they they yeah. try to make us package those channels of things that we just yep. don't want, but yet. Yeah. We, we have many customers that say, you know, I only watch like six channels. Why can't I just buy those six channels? Uh, and, and the reason that you, that you can't do the a la carte option is because the networks say, you know, it could be ESPN, mm-hmm. you know, ESPN is affiliated and owned by Disney, you mm-hmm. know, and Disney owns 14 other channels. And, and so when we're, when obviously we want to have Disney, we want to have ESPN, but in order to get those two channels, they make us acquire and, and purchase 12 other channels. Mm-hmm. Not only do they say, well, you've got to also carry these channels. They tell you, you know, where, where they, they have, to be, where placed, they have right? to be placed. And, and so we, and that's, and that's across the board with all these content providers. And, and I don't know if that'll ever change, um, there's been, it may, it may take an act of Congress, you know, mm-hmm. to, to allow the, uh, the a la carte option. Mm-hmm. Um, and you're, you're saying that literally. I'm yes. li- yeah, yeah li- he's not, literally yeah. saying, I mean, there's been some, you know, Canada just to the north of us, they've experimented with that. Um, I just, I just don't see, see that being, uh, you know, gaining any traction here mm-hmm. yet. Mm-hmm. Uh, but more and more options are available to consumers. Uh, we're very conscious of the, of the price uh, and when we work hard to, to get the best deals for our customers. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it, it's, it's, we view it as an offering, uh, to, to our UN Basin customers, uh, that's, that's tied to your broadband or your internet. And, and we do, we do our best to, to keep the cost down for them. Uh, yeah. Along with, oh, go ahead, along Doug. with that, but we are part of a, a national association mm-hmm. that helps cut those costs and mm-hmm. keep those costs down. So mm-hmm. yeah, that's one way we work with it. We're, we're part of a, a group called NCTC. There's about 8 million, um, subscribers, customers, mm-hmm. subscribers. There's probably about seven, 800 cable t- television operators. And that's when we go to, you know, negotiate with uh, TNT or whoever it may be, you know, we try to leverage the, the 8 million customer accounts that we have with that group. Mm-hmm. to get a better price. Yeah. Uh, and, and that, that's one of the things that we try to do. Yeah. I think that's been very helpful. Um, you know, sadly enough though, even with the NCT, NCTC backing, right, of 8 million mm-hmm. subscribers, it's still a fairly small chunk of the total, total body of water, it right? It's just yeah, a, very, very you know. small, you know, a lot, not a lot of leverage there. But, yep. but we do we do what we can. Yeah, and I think this one's been a challenge for all of us personally and collectively. I mean, Strata as an organization, we we have the culture. We we do not yeah. like to raise our rates, right? You know, on behalf of our members, we try to keep our rates the same or try to reduce them. So, 
in my 18 years or so at the organization, I can only think of like one or two rate increases in that same period of time. The internet rates have basically stayed the same. Mm -hmm. They actually dipped down five bucks per month for a little while and then came back came up back. to the norm. Um, Landline voice service rates did increase once or twice based on, you know, regulatory Regular. rules and requirements. Um, but so for us to be in the, in the television business, it's, it makes us a little uncomfortable to have to sometimes pass along those costs, those rate increases that we get from the programmers. But we just want to make sure our consumers understand we feel it as well and we're doing everything we can to keep those rates as affordable as we possibly can. Yeah, and, and I think one issue that's been happening more frequently over the last couple of years are, are blackouts mm -hmm. or, or channels going dark. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is because Strata, your cable television provider, you know, they're fighting really hard to get good rates for the customer. And the content providers, they're turning around saying, no, we're demanding this much, right? And, you know, this is what we want. And the reason why those go dark is because we can't come to terms on the price. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I think customers get very frustrated with the cable television provider thinking that that's, you know, our issue. But it's really we're, we're trying to keep the cost down. Mm -hmm. And for better or for worse, that's, that's what happens. Yeah. Um, well, I think it's been a great conversation, gentlemen. Um, do you have some parting thoughts for us? Either one of you want to leave us with? I, I think as a whole, you know, when we look at the, the purchase of Bresden and we look at the offering that we have today in comparison to, to early TV, mm -hmm. uh, this is a great opportunity for, for us to, to get TV to the entire basin mm -hmm. and uh, for you to be able to view uh, from anywhere you want and on any device you want. I think that's the key. Uh, it's, it's technology at, at the forefront, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we're excited. So go Strata yeah. TV. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would say don't be afraid to try Strata TV yeah. if you haven't. Um, like I said, there's no no contract obligations. It's it's a quick and easy sign up. It can be, you know, activated within what a day or two. Actually, Maybe. yeah, really quickly, yeah. less yeah. than that. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so I wouldn't be afraid of it. I, and and if you're the type of like my family, for instance, the winter time rolls around, we probably watch a little more TV. Mm -hmm. But summertime and and you're outdoors more, you can you can turn that service off and mm -hmm. and then reactivate it. You know when when the time comes, but yeah, don't don't be afraid of it. Yeah. So yeah, if a consumer wants to give that uh, service a try, Strata TV a try, they can visit our website, stratanetworks.com. Click on the TV um, icon, and you'll be right there on the page where it says, you know, activate for thirty days for free. So a couple clicks away, we definitely encourage you to do that. Um, it's been great to chat with you too. Appreciate yeah, your you. appreciate you. your work at Strata, and yeah. also your willingness to come on the podcast. I, I, I know I have to twist arms sometimes. Yeah, you guys have been great. We're getting Bo to lean a little bit towards the UNS side. I see him over here more and more. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm over here a lot. And and I, I love Vernal. It's it's great. Uh, yeah, love the golf course over here. Me too. Sad. I'm the same way. I'm a Neola boy, but I, I honestly consider the UNA base in my home. The longer I'm here, it's, it's one big community. So I, I know agree. we all feel that way. Well, we want to thank our listeners today. It's been a great conversation. If you have... If the listener has a topic that you'd like us to cover in future podcast episodes, we would definitely invite and welcome your comments, um, your feedback. You can comment on the post wherever you see this in the social media feed, or you can send us an email at podcast at stratanetworks.com, and we'd be happy to discuss it in the future. So thanks again, gentlemen, and thanks to the listener for taking time to listen to the Strata Networks podcast. All right. Thank you. Thank you all.